This is the Porsche 911 Carrera T. Now this is a very interesting car. Not only do I think it looks great, but it's also the kind of last of its kind in the form of the short, narrow body Porsche 911 because as you kind of moved into 992 generation, everything became, well, quite wide. As you can see, we've got this in a beautiful racing yellow. And what you get from this car is a three liter twin turbo engine producing 370 brake horsepower, giving you zero to 62 in four and a half seconds, and it'll top out at 182 miles per hour. Pretty good going, right? Now the 911 Carrera T comes with that brilliant flat six engine. However, the great thing about this car for me is you can get it in manual form and in PDK. And in manual form, it comes with an amazing seven speed manual gearbox. As in, well, I say amazing just because the fact that I've got seven gears is great. I'll let you know how it feels like to drive when we're on the road. However, the 991 Carrera T is uh, it's kind of positioned as that kind of driver focused car. It's the car that's supposed to give you that entry level into real driver's cars if you can't really get into a GTS or a GT3. However, the price tag on one of these, they start from £85,000. This one is £17 short of hundred grand. So it's got quite a few options on there. Some of the big ones include your carbon ceramic brakes. We've got the interior pack. We've got the £2,000 option for the kind of daylight LED lights. PDLS, I think they call it nowadays. As I said, in terms of spec, we have things such as the £6,000 carbon ceramics, which they're not cheap, but they do an amazing job at stopping you. That coupled with the 20-inch wheels, which are kind of painted in a titanium grey, makes this car look it looks pretty good but looks aside we need to find out what this thing is like to drive so i think it's about we get time we get in it go for a quick spin and see if the 911t is all it's cracked up to be let's find out Porsche Carrera 911T drive? That's the big question, isn't it? Now, I've had a chance to drive this for a little bit, and one thing I can immediately say is that the 911 characteristics that you've got from the previous models still ring true. You still have that brilliant, brilliant stance, and that front end turn is just as phenomenal as you remember it. What about this the manual box? Because I do have a seven speed gearbox. sounds good the car sounds really good in fact because this is a 2018 car so you don't have that plague of OPF filters all over this at the moment we have a bit more fruitiness we get some nice kind of pops and crackles out the back of the exhaust I think it I think it has a really nice tone to it now in terms of performance that's the big question really isn't it? that's what we all really want to know because this car is positioned as that entry level look at that look at this oh. This car is positioned as the entry-level focused driver's car, which is great. Um, and the predominant reason that people have done what you're doing that is because not everyone can afford a GT3, as I mentioned earlier on. This gives you a good amount of how a GT3 feels with its kind of stripped out back, uh, a manual gearbox, which is just great. But the GT3s came with a six speed. This is a seven speed. And getting into that gear, so I'm in third, I'm in fourth, I'm in fifth, I'm in sixth, and now I'm in seventh. There's a, something a little bit unnatural about doing that. And that's probably be, that's because I've never really done it before. This is the first time I'm driving a manual seven-speed gearbox. But it does feel great in terms of its throw. It's, it's like I said, it's not as good as the GT4 in my opinion, but I digress. Performance. So acceleration is good, it's strong towards the high end of the RPM. We get 370 brake horsepower from this. However, for a turbocharged three litre, being brutally honest, I would, have, I would have thought there'd be a little bit more punch to it, if I'm being completely honest. Towards that high RPM, you get all of that kind of Porsche oomph, it's where, that's where its power band really is. And having those turbos, I would have thought that you get a little bit more low down. I mean, not 
Porsche 911 Turbo S mid-range torque, but just a bit more. Now, there's an interesting point of theory, I guess, for me anyway, is that if you got one of these and you did a Litchfield tune, you're going to get 500 bhp. So I think that Porsche purposely held this car back so that it would not really be a direct competitor to the GTS, because I think a mapped one of these would be quicker than a GTS. So the steering, the suspension is really, really good. The way that you can turn this, look, it just, it's minimal steering in, but you'd expect that. I say that a lot about Porsches, but that's just how they are. They are that good. The, the road kind of surface at the moment is very good. I'm not getting much cabin noise in here, which is testament to the build quality of this Porsche 911 and all Porsches in general. But if I slow it right down, let me slow right down to first gear so you can have a little look. Look at this, first gear. We get a 7,100 RPM red line. The way you can throw this, oh look at that, it's just, it's just magical. The way you can throw this thing around corners for me is, it's why you buy a 911. When it comes to the interior of the 911T, it's got a, obviously a familiar 911 feel as you would expect, but one thing that I really like about this car is the lack of digital displays. You get one digital display here on the right hand side, but the rest of them are all analog and it's just refreshing to, to kind of go back a few, well, go back to basics almost. Cause you look at the 992 generation and most of it other than the rev count in the middle is all digital. The other thing is the steering wheel. I mean, I harp on a lot about Porsche steering wheels, but genuinely I think the setup that Porsche have is probably some of the best in the business. They're just perfect for what you need. They've got great feel around them. And you even got this kind of uh, sport selector here with kind of normal mode sport, sport plus an individual. The party piece, as I said earlier on, is this, the seven speed manual gearbox. Now I will say the throw itself is great, but just like that, it, every now and again, it does, feels a little difficult to get it into gear. The gate, the gating inside this is a little bit kind of, it's a bit notchy. Uh, I do think a BDK on these would be great fun and naturally they'll be quicker, uh, but just for the driver involvement, it's still a great throw and it still is a great gearbox. The infotainment system, again, um, is pretty good going. You'd expect that from modern Porsches. You do get things such as Apple CarPlay as standard on this, which really and truly is all you'll ever need. But you do get your nav, you get all that good stuff as well. Obviously this doesn't have the 981 bucket seats. This is the kind of, uh, these are the, the comfortable seats. So you've got kind of adjustable seats that you have to adjust them front and rear with this, but the rest of the seats are all kind of electronic. Um, one thing I do like a lot is the comfort factor of these seats because the 981s, yes, they're great for when you really, really want to kind of go for it, but you're not always going to want to go for it in these kind of cars. You might just want to drive this normally. Getting in and out of this is very, very easy. Of course, behind us is a different story. You don't have rear seats. And if you put your seats all the way back, the, whatever it is you're putting in the back isn't really going to have much leg space. So the fact that they've taken out the rear seats in this and kind of left you with some parcel shelves makes a whole lot of sense. So it kind of provides extra storage. And I think it looks great. It has a bit of a GT3 feel to it with a lack of rear seats. You know, you've got these uh, little uh, GT4 style, GT3 style um, door handle, because they said they wanted to lose weight in this car, but they've only really lost 20 kilos, which isn't an awful lot. And if you're brave enough, you can even go and spec your 911 Carrera T without infotainment. I don't think I could do that. that this is the last narrow body, knowing that the 992 generation has basically come along here and disrupted the Porsche 911 with its tech heavy new gadgets. Is the 991 platform the ultimate 911 to buy? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video guys on the Porsche 911 Carrera T. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to smash the like button. Comments are always welcome and I'll see you all very soon on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.